Virginia. Y'all already know what time it is, man. Check it out, man. So when Deion Sanders left Jackson State University, he says he left behind what he felt like was a blueprint for HBCUs and colleges uh, in the MEAC and SWAC to be able to be successful as far as football goes. And a lot of people disagree with that. A lot of people agree with it. I halfway agree with it. I'm half and half on it because of reasons what Ryan Clark is going to say. So we're going to talk about that in one second, man. But before we get started, make sure y'all like the video, comment y'all thoughts down below, man. We're a new channel. Just trying to get into the algorithm if nobody told y'all this today. Y'all are my brothers and sisters, all my family. I love each and every last one of y'all. And before we get started, we got to say good morning out there, Prime Land, man. Check it out. Mars back in the building, man. Hey, y'all y'all was missing him. We're going to try to get him on the early morning videos, man. But listen, like I said, Dion sat down with Ryan Clark on, on, on the Pivot Podcast. And like we said, we're talking about what he what he felt like was the blueprint. He felt like he left the blueprint behind for Jackson State, but a lot of people saying Prime is only one you, and a lot of the reason that people were coming to watch uh, those games or they got the media attention, they got the Under Armour stuff, was because of you and you, you in, in and of yourself. But let's just see what uh, Ryan Clark has to say, and then we'll break it down afterwards. Let's get it. Coach, I don't mean to say this in this way, but I don't know another way to say it. There's only one you, though. Thank you. And you say you leave right. hope behind, but so many people felt like when prime time left, mm -hmm. so did that hope that people, the Under Armors and the ESPN game days, they came to Jackson for Coach Prime. Right. And that's and that's one of the things that I was saying right there. Like you said, it's only one you. And so with in regard to those things or the, or the special things, you know, the, the, those things, you're not going to be able to achieve exactly what he achieved but you can still achieve some of this stuff and he's gonna talk about that in one second. Let's keep going. Right. And when you think about HBCUs now moving forward, not only just Jackson State, but the entire SWAC, what is it that they can take from kind of the blueprint that you left that's usable without your name? Let's go on the field first. Mm -hmm. Number one, you gotta have a- And then he said, you know, that's usable dot, dot, dot without your name. That's very important. Quarterback that could throw the darn football to win. That's a fact. It's two teams that really were successful. Uh, I just said the swag. Um, us and fam, you with uh, Coach Simmons, who is my guy. Quarterbacks that could spin it. Because sooner or later, you're going to find yourself down 14. And in the, in the, uh, uh, the MEAC, they, they had a few that can spin it as well. And they were very successful. Number two, the recruiting now is absurd. What I mean by that is now people are saying, I go to HBCU. Ain't nothing wrong with HBCU. I, I could do that because now there's a navigational system that leads you from the HBCU around to the NFL. Once upon a time, it and I'm gonna talk to y'all about that and what I feel like that route will be will be from now on after this too. It it was diverted. It wasn't happening. So it's it's so many things that that we left behind that you right. can glean from. I really believe that, and I honestly believe that, and I understand. The business acronym must change, though. The business model must change. That's it right. has to, and there has to be account and balances to that. And I mean that. And I try to check that. I was checking that. And that has to mm -hmm. change because we can't keep saying we don't have and poor little old me. We can't keep doing that because we got to make the most of what we have and who we have. Hold up. That's what we say, man. That's what my daddy used to say. You got, hey, you can't worry about what you don't have. What you can't, can't worry about. What, what is what if? It's what is, man. It's like, like what? What do we say? You get what you get, and you don't pitch a fit. I know a lot of people know about that. That uh, that old adage right there. And hey, you just got to make the best of what you got. So Ryan Clark, he actually said in this, he said, Coach Prime feels he left the blueprint for the HBCUs to be successful in today's football landscape. But I reminded him that there's only one Deion Sanders. He breaks it down. Uh, breaks it down pretty simply. Find a quarterback that can spin it, recruit with the belief that HBCUs are the, are the legitimate pathway to the league. Uh, but most importantly, the business acumen must be there. And that's something that I'm talking about, man. So we're going to talk about all three of those things. Like, listen, getting a quarterback, a lot of times, especially amongst HBCUs, like my, my cousin went to Delaware State and he was a linebacker. But Kelvin Horsey also went there. Horsey made it to the NFL, but but it was almost, he played for the Baltimore Ravens, Ravens. It was almost in spite of it because they run a lot of the, they run the ball a lot. So they run a lot of, um, they, back then they were running like the wing tee and, and a lot of wishbone and stuff like that because they were just a little bit behind. This was the late nineties or what have you. But um, same thing with Georgia Tech, you know, when, when um, what, what who was the last coach there? I forgot who the last coach there was, but he was, uh, he was from, from army or what have you and and they just ran the wishbone wing t or what have you and it just it just 
you know, somehow they had, um, somehow they had Megatron during that, and sometimes somehow they had Baby Thomas during that 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 uh that run. But it's like it's it's the offense that you run number one. Is it going to be conducive to putting guys to the next level? And and a lot of times with HBCUs, I feel like a lot of players they have to feel like the next level is Power Five football, not just not just getting to the NFL, but with the way that you can transfer, you got the transfer portal, you got all that stuff right now. Uh, you know, that I think that, I think, get on out of here, Mars. Hey, I think that, <laughs> I think that a lot of times you have to look at it like when the coaches are recruiting, they're going to have to come in and say, listen, you're somebody, uh, you you might be able to go to Georgia. You may be able to go to Alabama. You may be able to go to, to Kent State, somewhere like that, a lesser school or, or one of those, or South Carolina, any of those. But, are you ready to play at that level? You may have to sit a year. You can come here, start immediately, and if you're the if you're head and shoulders the best player here, you're gonna move to a power five. You can move to make a move to a power five school with no uh penalty. And with that, you can use that to, to showcase your talent on the next level, and then you can get to the NFL. That's what I feel like is gonna be more of the path to the NFL would be you you if you're a fringe player, somebody like uh we I mean, you know, just just any, but I'm just gonna pull a player um out of out of air that i like somebody maybe like dk metcalf if he if he wasn't that highly recruited but he's got the body he knows he can play or even shane hook he can come there play there a year or two just like almost like you were playing juco and then you transfer up to to power five and if you can cut it there, then you clearly should be able to cut it at the next level but i think that's more of the route that we're talking about you know with hp hp CU football, uh, they should be recruiting along those lines, saying you can come here and play immediately, and then obviously if you're the best player, then boom, you can just move on up and you'll be good. So I think that that's one of the things he's talking about. Quarterbacks, like you said, we already talked about quarterback play. Got to get out of there, running the ball, running the ball. They lost the Celebration Bowl. That quarterback in the Celebration Bowl, he didn't throw the ball that much, but he had the ability to throw the ball. And so it's one of those things where, yes, you can do it, but it's not easy. And that's the thing. Nobody says it's going to be easy. And then obviously, you know, the uh, checks and balances and stuff. Like, I mean, one of the reasons that I don't know if this is one of the reasons that he left. But, you know, he's talking about the checks and balances and how things are going on. And you keep saying little old me and we don't have this and we don't have that. When we have a lot of cases, and this happens at all schools, of, of administration um, allegedly mismanaging funds and stuff like that. And then you got Jackson State's allegedly uh, they put their president on administrative leave and you have all these things surrounding the, the university that doesn't have anything to do with the university presenting itself in a good light. Like we talking about like Cookman, how that whole Ed Reed debacle happened. And, and it really was about how the students living conditions are and things like that. So, so you got, we got to erase those things. But at the same time, I think that there is a clear path that you can go to an HBCU. And if you're good enough, you can, you, you can make it like, obviously you're not going to get the Travis Hunters. Obviously you may not get, players the caliber of Shane Cook you might not get a Tyler Brown or something like that but you can get players that like we said are on the fringe because there's a lot of players in HBCU football the skill positions and some of the line is just as good as any power five they just don't have the eyes on them and so that's what he's saying uh Ryan Clark and rightfully so you guys are not gonna have the eyes because you brought the eyes like Eddie George is still down there I mean still in HBCU football but they don't have the eyes at uh I'm gonna say Tennessee State is where he is they just don't have the eyes like they did but Dion brought eyes to the entire conference and then he brought eyes uh to to Jackson and you know the sponsors all that stuff and I think that's what a lot of people are saying like like there's only one you so we're not gonna get all the ancillary things and that's what he's saying you're not gonna get all the ancillary things but the basics that I left behind, you guys are completely capable of. But y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comment section, man. Like I said, when Dion was there, it would have been, it was, you know, the longer he was there, the better it would have been because rising tide raises all ships. And so if I, you know, if people, if guys would have come down that were fringe guys, but know they could play at the next level and plan to transfer, you know, after a couple of years, they would have come and they probably would have come to Jackson first. And then it's like, well, I can't get to Jackson, so I go over there to Tennessee. Tennessee State with Eddie George and then you know it would have filled out those ranks and you would have got better players by proxy and then you know eventually what would have happened is um you know like it would have, it would have been just like that almost a minor like a minor league system for power five football for lack of a better uh phrase but y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comment section man is there a blueprint to it or is being Deion Sanders a lot of the blueprint and uh and we just have to kind of accept that but also take some of the things that he's talking about into account and and hopefully you know, they make sense to them. But uh, y'all, let me judge y'all think now in the comment section. I'm going to holler at y'all next time. Till next time. It's your boy, Jay Easy, a.k.a. Fresh from the Barbershop, BK, the People's Champ. 
God speak. God speak.